Hi! Hassan up! Who's going? Ren and Stimpy. I'm different. And the Chipotle. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Velocity Kill. Coming to you at the speed of sound, we are on the air at the Hexapod Soundhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Nick, and I am joined by the best co-host there ever is, was, you are still, Luke, uh, me? I'd like to thank you guys for showing up, but I'd also uh, like to thank... Our DJ for sneaking in, DJ Backdoor. Hey, man. It's always a good time sneaking in with you guys on the show. Oh, we're, we're glad that you snuck in here with us. Nick, what do we got going on today? Oh, we're going to uh, do a little rewind uh, at the front of the show. We're going to hit a middle section of Buzzkill, our tried and true trusted segment there. And finally, we're going to do a based on a true story to wrap it all up today. So it's going to be a fun, creative show. I can feel it in my bones. Uh, but before we get into it, just a reminder to uh, for our returning listeners and a note for our new friends. Here at the Velocity Chaos Podcast, we explore the highest heights of human knowledge and the lowest depths of crude humor. Our mission is to tickle that pink thing between your ears, poke the frontal lobe, and sometimes just smash the laugh box. So hop in and buckle up for an infotainment ride across the airwaves. And just a quick second before we get into all of that, uh, just a reminder, if you guys would follow us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod or check us out on facebook you can also drop us some stars on apple Podcasts, some love on spotify leave a review on your podcast platform or choice toss uh toss or throw us a sub on the youtube and if you know you're feeling frisky and you want us to talk about something or answer in something leave something in the comment or email us at velocity chaos podcast at gmail.com we just want to thank each and every one of you for your support All right. Uh, as we do every time, we are going to do a bit of make the connection here at the top of the show. This just gets Luke and DJ and I a little warmed up, uh, gets imaginations pumping. Essentially what it is is a word association exercise. DJ is going to give us two words and then he's going to roll some dice and he's going to give us how many moves we have between the two words. So roll them away. Nice. There you go. We have a five and a four. Oh, beauty, Which beauty. We know equals nine. Uh, nine. That's exciting. That's that good. Is. That's, uh, I believe in French they say nine. <laughs> it is. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to be right. Facts. Uh, what are the two words that we are connecting today, DJ? Backdoor. Gentlemen, I'd like you to make the connection between cheesy bread and... <laughs> Bikinis. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, not including the first word, Luke and I are gonna go from cheesy bread Shake to it bikinis. Up so, <laughs> from greasy. <laughs> oh, my mic's on. <laughs> some greasy, from greasy to greasy. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> cheesy bread. Cheese. Milk. <laughs> Breast. <laughs> Bodies. Um, a beach. Oh, nice, nice. I saw what you did there. I like that. I like that. Uh, water. Sun. Bikinis. What? Bikini. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he said four. He said five and four. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Um, anyway, we got there. We nailed it. We did it. We nailed I it. I pulled the Michelle. I pulled the Michelle. It's all right. It's, 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 it's catching on when, you know, you know, you're a trendsetter and you're out there, uh, you know, being a, uh, uh, what, what do we do? Trivia. Michelle Trivia. just gets there early every yeah. time. She yeah. just, she's always early. She's women always, can do that. She's like a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Women can do that. They're I, thought, I thought you did that. I do do that too. <laughs> but hopefully not as early as her. <laughs> no, I'm pretty early. <laughs> Trust me, no one's earlier than me. <laughs> I am always. You know what they say? What they say is, uh, if you're earlier on time, 
If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you're fucked. So, you know, got to be early. Uh, yeah, but that's true in all <laughs> scenarios. <laughs> Every should, single scenario. I should try being late more. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, We're all right there with you, pal. <laughs> you know what that was the sound of? That, that was the sound of the rewind. <gasps> oh, Nick, Nick did this. Nick, Nick did. Nick did. Nick did, Nick, Nick did something. That, that's just <laughs> the rewind. Nick don't beat it. Nick don't that's beat the rewind that happening. <laughs> Nick did something way back when. Cartoon cartoons. I think episode, that was 28, 29. Hey, first one back. First one back. Well, we're getting close to the end. Let's circle. Let's circle back. Or not to oh. the end in general. Oh no. End of the season. <laughs> end of the season. We're getting close. We're on ninety eight. <gasps> so seventy episodes later. Let's circle back, not to cartoon cartoons. There was there was a different batch of cartoons back uh, back in the '90s, early aughts. That I don't think they'd play today. They they wouldn't be safe. <laughs> yeah. Labeled as cartoons, you know, we got Rick and Morty now, Adventure Time. That's a little more like those things are a little more, uh, you know, adult friendly. Adventure Time is adult friendly. I've I don't never know. Seen it? I thought it Me was either. just like a big like. Big I, kids watching. I thought it was I mean, the same cartoon universe. Network. It's kind of like that Adult Swim level, or like okay. splits the difference between cartoons and Adult Swim. Okay. Teenagers, right? Teen Titans. It's got Teen, a lot yeah. of adult humor. But yes, so we got we got more adult stuff now, like cartoons. But I feel like a lot of our some of the ones in the nineties, those were towing the line of you know acceptability for kids shows. Ren and Stimpy. Pinky in the brain, oh, Pinky in the brain. Uh, <laughs> or angry beavers, angry beavers. Like I, there, courage there, there's more. Dog. Yeah. Courage, a cowardly dog had some, had some moments. So I think, um, there were a lot of shows I wasn't allowed to watch because they were <laughs> just like weird. I think it was just, they were weird. I think my parents just were just like blanket. Like this is weird. So let's just not have to watch and censor this. Let's just cancel it all together. That's one way to go about <laughs> it. I mean, I'm sure maybe in a few years we'll be parents. I don't know. I don't know what the plan is involved, but uh, you guys, you guys don't want to be co-dads. I, I got co-dads. Cooper's at home. Oh, I'm yeah. a co-dad. I'll be a co-dad. I'll be an uncle. I'm it's, all about it. It's like a uh, full house. No, fam- No, yeah, full house. Family. Let's full just guy. do a full we house. We got to have that set up just in case. Who's Uncle, uncle Nick and Uncle Tim. Oh, okay. I mean, Uncle uh, DJ Backdoor always comes in the back door. <laughs> you have like a niece and like, you're like, Uncle Nick, why did you get divorced? <laughs> <laughs> to be here with you. Yeah. You are more important. <laughs> My Lily. Uh, to be here with you and to replicate that 90s classic hit, Full House, with your father. <laughs> Everywhere you look. We Danny. It. Hey, Danny. I mean, Luke. <laughs> come in here. <laughs> and then I die eventually in a hotel room. I'm de- <laughs> oh, I am definitely, definitely the, uh, I'm definitely the Joey in this <laughs> gym. <laughs> No, I'm probably I'm well. You you're get probably the, the Danny. I'm, I'm the Danny. The Joey. You get the hype with Danny, but I'm the Danny. Yeah, a professional working guy. Yeah, you're you're the Joey, and I'm the Michelle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. I mean, still Adorable. looking for horrible. Still looking you're, you're for our the, Jesse Katsopoulos. Kimmy Gibbler <laughs> <laughs> coming in the back door all the time. <laughs> See, that's this is a good thing that happened from all the cat- cartoons getting canceled. Yeah. <laughs> coming in the back. Door. But what's no. up? Short stuff. What did she say? Oh, sorry. Squirt. Squirt. Yeah. What's what it? Stop squirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tanner. Mm. This is going to go into a, a nostalgia of a full house. Yeah. They should have had a cartoon full house. Uh, now, it. nowadays, they'll, uh, they'll turn everything. Well, they got the, I didn't, I didn't watch the, the reboot. No, I you can't. You don't need to. You can't. I don't. Except for um, Stephanie. Mm. Total babe. Yeah. She's she getting pushed show? down by police and everything, man. Hell Yeah. <laughs> I'd hey I'd push her <laughs> I'd push her down by police. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, so let's talk about real cartoons. Real cartoons. Real cartoons. Not like real life changing cartoons. Not like DJ Tanner. Arthur. Ooh, okay. <laughs> That, that's the other spectrum. <laughs> that, that was that's, my that's cartoons. PBS. That was everything's canceled. You can't cancel public access, <laughs> mom. He's wearing a sweater vest and he does a rabbit. It's brought to us by Libby's Juicy Juice. <laughs> <laughs> can't, you can't cancel it. You can't cancel Juicy Juice. <laughs> <laughs> Libby's Juicy Juice. It, oh. it, this was paid for in part by viewers like me, mom. <laughs> Knowing that I did absolutely nothing to fund this, but like except me. watch it, except yeah. watch it. <laughs> Thank you, Mister Rogers. Oh, dude, Arthur, man, holy cow! Yeah. Shut up, DW. 
Uh, it got pretty vulgar sometimes. Powerpuff, Powerpuff, Powerpuff Girl. Yeah, that was another one. Were you with guys, the gangrene? We gotta game? just do the Nickelodeon. We gotta, yeah, Nickelodeon. We gotta hit Nickelodeon. Um, what are we gonna do? Just name them? Or I was a big Ed Ed Nettie fiend. That I mean, hey, that's, that's cartoon, cartoon, cartoon. cartoon. We've Whoa. already visited the seventy you episodes go, ago. Go, oh, so we're stick. We gotta stick with the network. Yeah. <laughs> go back to episode twenty-eight. Come on, DJ All back right. door. All right. This is why you gotta come through the back. We don't let you in yeah. the front door. No, Ren and Stimpy. They had some. They had some vulgar stuff. I know. There's a scene. One they they sold log. They, they had like these. <laughs> they had you know infomercials in between their shows, but they had you know log. It rolls downstairs. A loner in pairs or no over your neighbor's dog. It's great for a snack if it's on your back. It's log log log. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great great song. Great great commercial to throw in. There's even a, a scene in in one where um, Ren is uh, he's sawing a log. That's and Stimpy oh. has is holding the log on his back between his butt cheeks and Ren's behind him uh <laughs> thrusting. thrusting. That that's the stuff that was gotten away with back then that would not fly today. Do you think you would have ever known this if it wasn't for Facebook or no. Instagram? Like I mean th- this is where we find it. this. You're you're sitting at work and then you know you're like getting your spreadsheets done or you know killing your bugs and and then you're sitting there, you know, Ren and Stimpy sawing some log. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I think that well, the saw it, is like attached to like his crotch. Yeah, like it is like, and then limps and all that. It's like, yeah. what the? That that's the stuff they got away with. But, um, oh, what was I gonna go with it? Dang it, I had something. It's oh. gone. I mean, well, here, here's here's one for you that I think was way. I think it, it was before its time. Here, I'm saying like Tarantino here. Like, yeah, they weren't ready for that one. Invader Zim. Were you guys in Bay? Uh, yeah, you guys? every once I in never a while. got that far. In Gur, yeah, Gur, dude. <laughs> Man, I, I could only sing the Doom song. <laughs> doom, 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 doom. Come on, Gur. Yeah, <laughs> I could only sneak away long enough to watch half a Dragon Ball Z episode. Nice, and some SpongeBob, some Toonami. 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 That was like when like the family would get together at Thanksgiving. I'd go in the other room and like where there was TV, and they'd come in. What are you watching? Animal Planet. Yeah. Animal Planet. You quick, just have quick change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fifty two, <laughs> twenty one, whatever it was. Gary. I had, I had a similar thing where I got to play Pokemon. I got my computer, but I thought it was. I thought like everyone else thought. You know, that's for like little kids. This was like you know, I was like twelve or so. <laughs> so I would be playing like Counter Strike or Starcraft on the computer, but then I would Alt Tab to play. Uh, you know, play Pokemon. Yeah. And then if I heard someone coming, I would go back to the more like you know adult game. So. It's like thinking they're gonna be, they're gonna find me watching porn or something, but I was just like <laughs> playing Pokemon. <laughs> I was saying that's training for your adult game yeah. when, you're, when you're 18. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> uh, that was my life. Uh, what about well, uh, like Wild Thornberries and Rocket Power, dude? The real stuff. Those were clutch. That's where you learn to appreciate people who look different than you. Yeah, literally, their heads are shaped different than anything reasonably human. <laughs> I think I think Rocket Power defines my life to this day. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then just like Wild Thornberries was like my precursor to right proper Steve Irwin. You know, <laughs> like I was like, all right, this is what I'll get when Steve Irwin's not on at three o'clock. No, yeah, Rocket Power. Or the, or what was her little brother's name? Donnie. Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> no rocket power definitely fueled like oh i want to get a skateboard i want to get rollerblades yeah. even you know what rollerblade the connotation is uh you know and <laughs> <laughs> i want to do sport like it, it was just cool like i wanted to go into a half pipe or a you know, quarter pipe and, and stuff like that or and jump in the bowl rocket power to this day you look at something and you're like i could do that yeah. That's what Rocket Power did to me. Yeah. It was like uh, like that wave, the big wave special. The do you remember kahuna, that? Like yeah. The big kahuna episode. I was like, oh. I was like, that's where I learned that. Like, just be fearless. Just I can do that. And we're, we're about broken bones after you've broken them. And we're all just squids. <laughs> <laughs> all just squids. Oh, I, I remember what so going back to the Ren and Stimpy and stuff and the and the vulgar stuff that they snuck in there that we wouldn't have known. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, did that like subconsciously motivate us going at least me in the future? Just like all these, like you know, that's what she says, and just having like dirty minds growing up, like it's just, it was just subtly implanted into our brains to notice these things, and now, now we're just fiends, <laughs> fiends for the sneaky joke. Yeah, I don't know. Like at the same time, like there's something to be said. Like even with Shrek, when Shrek came out, 
and they're filtered adult jokes. Like there's something to yeah. be said about innuendo and like, like, like filtered stuff. Cause now I think we're in an age where you're talking about Rick and Morty, where it's just blatantly in your face and you kind of don't get that restraint, which kind of can create a, a nice, um, humor, you know, like a, yeah. a, like a really delicate humor that I think is really lost. Yeah. Um, well, it, the art of innuendo is pretty much gone. And that's the thing. Like when you're creating a cartoon for kids, you know, who's going to be there watching it? Probably the parents. So you got to put something that's yeah. safe for the kids, but also sneak stuff in. So the parents actually enjoy it and, you know, can get some entertainment yeah. out of it too. Sure. Sure. Get all the markets. Yeah. I think they've watered it down a little bit. Um, but I mean, even SpongeBob, early SpongeBob was kind of odd. Yeah. You know, and people get their faces ripped off and, you know, there's, you know, a lot of butts in SpongeBob in the first couple seasons. Yeah. Um, so. And some bangers, some <laughs> real bangers. Some Spon- bangers. SpongeBob goes hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, man, but I miss it. There should just be like a cartoon channel. Well, what is there now? What, what, do you have to order Cartoon Network? I don't know. It's probably on cable. I'm sure you on can still find your Nick- Nickelodeons, you know. Maybe. Anyway, I'm going to be thinking about all all the rest of the night, all the shows that I used to watch, probably all, all the way up to the moment I go to bed, um, which reminds me, before we get to the next sec- sec- segment, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, how was your last night's sleep? Don't answer that. I already know. Unless you were sleeping on bed, you are not having the night nightly nightful rest that you deserve. Bed will coddle you, support you, give you a place, safe place to cry on. Bed is there for you. The soft body and membrane has been around for millions of years, and the secret is finally being awoken. Unlike you, who will be peacefully sleeping in bed, getting the perfect amount of rest, uh, bed will make you feel like you are sleeping on clouds because you will be sleeping literally on clouds. That's right. Bed supports you with the softness of clouds. When you order bed, be sure to use the code VC sleep for a silent $70 off your first monthly payment bed. It's like sleeping on clouds because you are. This is not an actual product service idea. Just to get you thought it was. It's not. If there's something out there with the same name, we aren't aware and have no affiliation and offer no judgment on the product service or idea. When you said millions, I thought you were going to say, for the last millions and millions <laughs> of years. And then... I will say it next time. Okay. <laughs> next time. Next time we come around to it. Although we might next next time around to it, we might have all new ads. Or we might have all new, completely new ads. That's Hun- crazy. Hundred new ads. Hundred new ads. Hundreds of, Hundreds of new ads. You know what we, we're going to do? We're going to do uh, about 12 to 13 to 14 new segments. Not segments, topics right now. <laughs> we're just going to completely reinvent <laughs> everything. Right now, uh, DJ Backdoor is uh, is going to hit us with a, a, a plethora of topics right now. And uh, while we're talking about them for you know either 20 seconds or three minutes, he's, he's going to interrupt us with the sound. <laughs> And then he's gonna sultrily give us a new topic. And uh, DJ Backdoor, what you what you working on back there? I'm working on a whole plethora of topics for you. <laughs> top, top topic, 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 hey, topic, topic. Hey, I have I have stupid topic mouth. It doesn't mean you gotta get stupid mouth. <laughs> hey man, you're rubbing off on me. Anyway, I do that sometimes, gentlemen. We got plenty of topics for you today. And your first subject is hobbies. Ah uh, yes, hobbies. The old. The old times tale. I just gotta jump in on this men. one. My uh, my wife, her second language is my wife. Her second <laughs> language is uh, English, right? Like, and um, for the longest time, she was like, I guess she just mispronounced certain things, which is cute, actually. And totes adorable. I was like, I need to find like a picture frame that we can customize and like, you know draw on and stuff she's like well you can go to that that craft store i'm like michael's she's like no that hobie lobby <laughs> i'm like what she's like yeah hobie lobby it's for your ears and i was like what <laughs> hobby lobby <laughs> <laughs> that is adorable it is adorable yeah my dad said his hobby um is taking care of pools because my parents have a pool in their backyard and he would, he every, would every morning you know he has to go out and make sure the ph is balanced everything he doesn't swim in it he just takes care of it for Shaking other people it, to swim in looking at yeah. it in the sunlight <laughs> <laughs> kind of hobbies someone, you got luke you're pissing this pool <laughs> there's a difference between peeing in the pool and peeing into the pool big difference big difference yeah 
I location, do location, location. Uh, hobbies. Yeah, I got none. Too busy doing doing this. Yeah, this guy doesn't play Dungeons I, and Dragons. I'm too busy hanging out with these friends trying to create content. You know, we don't get paid for it. It's something we do out of passion. I don't have time for hobbies. This guy doesn't play any instruments. I don't do I, like I. You know, don't do anything out of pure love. Uh, except you know, just get together with these two guys. This guy doesn't play disc golf. You know, I mean, don't play disc golf. Uh, no, I mean, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say I have got nothing. Have a, Hobbies that I do on a weeknight with some buddies. Just this guy doesn't crochet. Nothing creative. This guy. Your subject is McDonald's. That's America's favorite pastime. McDonald's. I haven't had McDonald's cheeseburger since 2008. Well, you're missing out, <laughs> buddy. Because you know what? As of right now, the McRib is back oh, yeah. for a one more time run and if you don't get your mitts, your grubby little mitts around the sweet spare rib with the sauce and the onions and the pickles and the bun, if you don't wrap your lips around that one last time for the farewell tour, you are missing out. I was thinking about this. So the McRib is the Elton John of fast foods, right? <laughs> fast food sandwiches. Like like farewell tour, uh, yeah. like, you know, tastes good in your mouth. But not in your hands. <laughs> But not your hands. Yeah. Very f- flashy and sparkly in the ads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's the Elton John of fast food. It's very good. It's very I'd, good. If that's the case, I'd get some Elton John in my mouth. Very scrumptious. <laughs> I had one the other day. Look it all up off your lips, yeah. off your face. Yeah. Although the, la- the time before the last time I had a McRib, uh, it was not saucy at all. And it was very disappointing. Your subject is the gold rush. Ooh. I would have been the kind of guy who's like, I'm not going to look for gold. I'm going to sell to the gold miners. Like, I'm going to buy 100 pans, 100 gold pan, you know, like uh, sifting pans. And I'm mm-hmm. just going to sell those. I would be the guy that's uh, waiting on the edge of the riverbank. And the guy down in the bank is like, oh, I found some gold. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> now I found some gold. <laughs> Okay, Bandit Luke. Yeah. Bandit Luke over here and uh, Pan Fried Nick. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got you another pan to sell. Yeah. <laughs> We're in this We're together. Just, it's like, just like flipping pans. <laughs> yeah. How many pans do you buy? 12. That's all you need. <laughs> you sell You sell the gold to like the, the gold guy in the town. And you're like, how much can I get for this? It's like a hundred bucks. All right, great. Give me, the, gives you the hundred bucks. Bam! <laughs> and then you take the gold and you throw it back in the river. Yep. Someone else finds it. Just so I can kill Bam! someone else. <laughs> I don't think he likes gold at all. He just <laughs> likes killing people. He give a crap about gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh man he's just, he has some sort of duty to return these pans to nick how unlucky were we as a culture couldn't it have been like 20 years later and then we could have had like the 69ers hell yeah 69ers would, san francisco 69ers that would have been that would have been like so hard poetic justice your subject is magic well, the, there's not magic it's illusions really um, what are you talking about they really do that they really make monkeys fly out of your butt. Yeah, dude, I've been there. It's hardcore. <laughs> what if? I mean, magic. It's it's got to be real. Like Santa Claus, how does he how does he make himself really tiny, fitting down all these chimneys? That's real magic. But yeah. like David Blaine, you just you know the monkeys bit. Like, what if he's just like, hmm, never heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure that one out. So I'm gonna take uh, a tennis ball sleeve shove that up my right <laughs> insert the monkey, <laughs> the into the monkey. Tennis ball sleeve. <laughs> close it up don't squeeze at all i'm gonna put a banana on top of the monkey so he can survive for a day i'm gonna walk around and then i'm gonna pull uh bruce almighty here, right here yeah right here in an alleyway how'd they how'd they do that scene that's incredible <laughs> that the actor you know actually shoved the monkey up his butt <laughs> Well, David Blaine was a consultant oh. on that film. Yeah. <laughs> oh, magic, magic. Splitting the splitting the Red Sea. If you could if you could pull off one magic trick, what would it be? Like perfectly. One that's like already been done or oh, oh, I got one. Yeah. Being crucified and then being buried in the tomb and then disappearing <laughs> yeah. three days uh, three days later. Well, 
I'm glad that magic trick was pulled off because now you can go to heaven. <laughs> we'll see about that. I, don't know, I might be going to hell because of that. <laughs> It'd be that, like, you remember that, back on uh, November uh, 20. That was an insensitive joke. Uh, <laughs> next. Yeah. You got something to say to Jesus over here? <laughs> He's like wiping his eyes. Like, that one really hurt. Thought better of you. <laughs> You even I even lent you my looks, the good looks. <laughs> uh, I don't have his V's though. <laughs> don't have those. I gotta work for that. Yeah, I gotta work. You gotta work for that. Your subject is homeless people. Let me take a quick uh, drink. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I thought something that would be cool. You know, it'd be very generous. But if you had land or something somewhere, just build tiny houses, tiny houses for uh, homeless people or veterans or whatever. Better yet, yeah. Yeah. put all the raw materials out somewhere and say, hey, that's your land. If you can build a house on it, you get the quarter acre that the house sits on. If you build it, you will own it. Yes. And I don't know. They're just going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, it's... It, 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 okay, this is a tough subject. Um, we talked about that that one time, about what would happen if you started over. Yeah. That was a great segment, I thought. It was good. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if, uh, you know, we're, we're coming from places of strength. I guess they, they'd be coming from places of not strength. Yeah. So it'd be a little tougher, I think, for people to to give them opportunities. A lot, you, you have connotations about people you see on the street. Sure, sure. Um, you know, a lot of them are addicted to drugs and or alcohol and stuff. So that's, yeah. that's a problem. So it's like, how do you get to the root of that problem? And then, you know, how do you... Because you want... I mean, you want them. You want... You want good for them, but you don't want to do anything for them, basically, is what you it boils down. You want to them. enable them, is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And the- Your subject is Walt Disney. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, the old, uh, the old H2O. <laughs> that's, how we, that's how I came up with Mickey Mouse. Yeah, H2O. <laughs> Two couple of hydrogens and oxygen, and they're, they're all big old floppy. All he ears. wanted to do was be a chemist. Everyone really <laughs> pushed him into this whole like entrepreneur cartoonist kind of deal. Man, what what could have Walt invented if we hadn't made him make Mickey Mouse? <sighs> we probably could have. We we could have been to the moon before that. Cured cancer, been to the moon. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know, to to create a legacy like that of so many cartoons, and and now to owning so many other platforms and yeah. franchises like star Wars and what other bullshit that they own. Like, <laughs> could you just imagine like if you started like, I don't know, say the velocity chaos podcast or something. Yeah. And then in, you know, 50 years, you know, it's the velocity, K- the VCP brand. Yeah. And we just own, I don't know, the Beatles or something. Yeah. <laughs> like I, it would be wild to start something that becomes legendary. One of my favorite things though, is just how big the house of mouse has become. And my one friend said he told one of the best jokes of just uh, like all these young directors who go in and direct a Marvel film and they think like, oh, this is my big break. And then they're like really forced to do something. And he just he just went full Mickey Mouse off. He's like, you're going to take this movie. You're going to do exactly what I tell you. You're going to like it. You signed the goddamn contract. All right. So you shut up and you direct the shit out of this movie. OK. <laughs> 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 just like, <laughs> just like, like yeah, Mickey Mouse is just running the show. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like forcing these young directors to work for like ten grand, like direct a hundred million dollar movie, and just like you're gonna like it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your subject is how you would like to die. <laughs> Mickey Mouse tells but, me yeah. that <laughs> I'm gonna go in and direct the movie as if my life depended on it. And I'm yeah. going to fail. And he's like, yeah. you'll sign a contract yeah. so I can cut your legs. <laughs> Just pull out the, I'd probably, I'd like to go by, you know, looking for gold in like a river basin <laughs> and be like, oh, I found gold and then get <laughs> shot. You know, that'd be, so I have like one last happy thought. Uh, Yeah. Winning the lottery right now and having a heart attack. That'd be cool. <laughs> like a uh, Vegas vacation. Vegas vacation. <laughs> uh, how do I want to die? Uh, in my sleep, quickly, <laughs> yeah, pain, painlessly. Yeah. In my sleep, cancer-free. That's, that's yeah. how I'd like to go. Yeah. Uh, s- suddenly. Now that I said it, I'm not going to get any. Oh no. I'm going to be cancer-ridden and 
in a burning fireball yeah. Yeah, plane you're crash. Have, <laughs> have uh, cancer. You're going to fall down some stairs, a burning staircase, and get electrocuted on an open outlet yeah. and then drowned in a bucket of water at the bottom. <laughs> it's like, and then, you like break your neck yeah. and your like face just lands like partially in like a paint <laughs> uh, like a pan of ca- paint yeah just deep enough to cover up your mouth and your and your nose. and there's like a box of knives that you get stabbed with <laughs> and then someone comes and shoots you after an accident i that i would be okay if like once you get past the first two things you're like bring it on mine as well because when they find you and the corner's like you're not gonna believe this chad <laughs> but this guy fell down the stairs with stage four cancer, mind you. <laughs> Takes a long drag from a cigarette. <laughs> stage four cancer, let me tell you. I don't know what he was doing in this stairwell. It's a shame it caught fire because uh, he could have made it, but he slipped on some grease and tumbled all the way down. He broke his neck about the 12th step. And <laughs> Wait, it gets better from there. <laughs> Your subject is Zendaya. Oh, oh fire! I will always love you. Man, talk about fires, man. Talk <laughs> about smoky fires, man. Tom Holland, dude. Man of the hour. Now, Zendaya, holy shit, though. Like, super, super talented on top of just being incredibly likable, charismatic, and and good looking. I mean, she, she's got it all. And what I love, too, she's, like, not part of a dynasty. You know, she made her own way. She's I mean, my future ex-wife. <laughs> Second future ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Considering what's happening in uh, three days. <laughs> yeah. I always tell people, M- Michelle's my uh, first wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, Zend- Zendaya. What a name. How bold. No yeah. last name. No last yeah, name. she's she's just, uh, she's like a share. On a top seal. of that, she's like, you know how ballsy I really am? Uh, or or how are they? The kids say it these days. That's politically correct. Brazen. Uh, brazen. Yeah. You know how brazen I am <laughs> these days. I'm not only gonna like pick one single name. I'm gonna make it at the bottom of the alphabet. Yep. I'm gonna go alphabetically last. Two Z's. To Zayn Daya. That is. I like that. In Denny News. Dun tu. Well, that's because yeah, Zendaya. Some people do the alphabetical and then they'll flip it, you know. So she's she's ahead of the game. Aya does. <laughs> Your subject is prohibition. <laughs> Bring it on. I'm anti-hibition. <laughs> you know, we should be able to drink as much as we want. We should be able to be inhibited as much as we want. <laughs> <laughs> we should not care what they say about our drinking habits. That's what they're trying to do now with no, other just stuff. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so so there's there's three people, right? There's three people during prohibition. There's the uptight tight wads who weren't going to drink. There are the people who go to the speakeasies and pay a lot of money to drink, and then there's the bootleggers. Which which would you be? I don't need to drink. So you'd be the uptight tight wads? Probably. Wow. Okay. Bootlegger. Yeah. Me and you both, buddy. Yeah. We're going hard in the streets. Yeah. Ha- Get the Model A. Bring the Model A around. <laughs> 30 minutes later. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Only got this horse. <laughs> Just makes this weird sound. <laughs> Put as many bottles of beer in the saddlebags as you can. Leave the rest. Well, there's three of us. Yeah, we're all getting on the horse. <laughs> Your subject is virtual reality gaming. It's the future. It's the future. Well, Literally. actually, the real future is real reality technology. Real reality technology. RR, that RR technology. But virtual reality, man, it makes you feel like you're in it. It does. Uh, th- let me tell you that. Let me tell you. When the Oculus came out originally, I tested it with someone and I. Uh, I was nauseated for about two days. No, really? Hand to God, yeah. And I, I, I was in, in the, in the virtual reality. Of maybe ten. You're minutes. not allowed to do that. Why? You already besmirched his son, so it's got to be hand to something oh. else. Hey, oh, right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> hand to Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just check. Sure, just he's minute. real. <laughs> he's gonna be like, ah, remember that time? <sighs> you can't stay here. <laughs> Where am I gonna go? <laughs> No, but seriously, the Oculus, like I was in it for, it was, it was the first rendition. And the problem with some of these VRs are, you know, earlier versions, it doesn't track some of the, uh, 
diagonal head, mo- uh, head. Yeah, it doesn't have some of those motions. No, so no head bobbing. No head bobbing. So yeah, if you're like you know going like like in a summer popsicle or something. None of this. No. None of none of the other side. No, but yeah. So sometimes like it doesn't track that, so then it messes with your brain. Yeah, you, know, you get nauseated. Wow. Um, but, yeah. Vertigo, right? Is that vertigo? No, I don't think that's vertigo. It's just seasick. So then your brain's <laughs> just like off for like yeah. two days. It was it was bad, but after that, mm-hmm. like the update, like I played the Vive. Uh, oh yeah, and that that's a good one. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. When we all did it, yeah. the full like arena stuff with the we did eight guys and we did um, eight. It dudes. was all in a circle, and it was no, no for real. We did a VR arena zombie killer one. Yeah. I was I was off for like a good three hours after that. Just like mm. depth perception seemed weird. It just it. it it didn't make all sense to me. It yeah. You so get, it affects you for sure. Yeah, you get you get in, enveloped in in the gaming that's why world. I think if it, once it becomes real, like in the rigs and everything, and people can spend like a couple hours in a VR game with yeah. enough material to work through in that amount of time, I think people are really gonna start to commit hardcore. Your subject is world records. <sighs> gotta gotta be envious. There's got to be some stupid yeah. record. Like longest time balancing a pencil, a sharpened number two pencil on your pinky. Like fun fact, come up with that one. Fun fact. This is actually sad, sad story. I was like an inch and a quarter away from holding a world record. Penis size? (laughs) Shortest. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, longest armpit hair. Really? I had one mutant that just grew out of all the other ones. I'm not kidding you, dude. I could wrap it around oh, geez. my elbow. The record's like 11.3 inches or whatever, and I was literally an inch and a quarter away. <laughs> and why, why'd you cut it? Or I this, didn't. At, this post, Pepe uh, died. We named him Pepe. Uh, we named him Pepe. You were Deanna was in too on much. This. No, no. I, I, I think what I... <laughs> I thought I probably should have done was like get real shampoo and like wash it. And I think he just dried out in the summertime or mm. something. And one day he just wasn't there anymore. Dang. I was like, I literally felt like I lost a pet. That hurts. I mean, when you have something like that. So I'm trying to coax out his, uh, his heir to the throne, <laughs> you know, his hair to the throne. His- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, exactly. So Pepe, Pepe two, Pepe yeah. Sancho. Wow, that was that was a wild ride. That was uh, I grew him out after I got married. <laughs> uh, oh, so within the last uh, year. Well, well, I mean, you can't well, you can't get anything with that. Like, you can't go around with that guy on your back. Hey, it just depends on how head. confident you are. Yeah, you I, I see something sweet. Yeah, I have a girl like lick it or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, you gotta be confident, and it might get challenging sometimes. Like maybe. Maybe sometimes you get a little lonely if you're doing stuff like that, but the School of Hard Knocks can sign you up for the fall semester and keep you in class from 8 a.m. till tonight school. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there that are in need of a little comfort, a little unconditional love, a little snuggle. Well, do I have the thing for you? Creature! Creature is a multifaceted little ball of enduring admiration and unending affection. So if you got long armpit hair, uh, Creature will enjoy that. They are specially bred from interdimensional cuddle bugs crossed with high static fur balls and touched in a touch of a horned skull, scaly crawlers. Creature comes in multiple configurations. Furry, fluffy, fuzzy, funky, flammable, fluid, filmy, flaccid, flimsy, fubsy, and or freaking frozen. That's right. They are frozen solid, and you can defrost them at your own leisure. Create your ideal creature by going to the website, www w.ineedcuddles.gov.org and enter the code I am God VC pod <laughs> to unlock special selection features not available for other customers. This is not an actual product, service, or idea. Just in case you thought it was, it's not if there is something out there with the same name you're unaware and have no affiliation and offer no judgment on the actual service, product, or idea. Okay, just because it's a good night, it is a good night. We are trying to uh, get this film off the ground. Uh, Luke and I have been working on it for a while now. Um, as in, we really got the we got the log line. That's what we got. Yeah, we <laughs> but got, uh, we've we've really perfected this log line. We perfected it because it's based on a headline. Uh, it actually is a headline uh, from a real news article. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this in. Um, we got to go through the back door. Uh, there's this like underground kind of like um, production company. They've done a lot of sketchy stuff, uh, like sketchy movies. 
Um, so they got to kind of keep a low profile, very profitable films, but we're going to go in and we're going to pitch to a producer here. Uh, so you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Amazing. How, how you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm doing real good. Uh, let's get this, uh, this pitch on the road, come up in the back door and give me your best. All right. We're, we're coming in the back door. Here we go. Uh, want to let you know, sir, this is based on a true story. It's, uh, based on a real life headline. Um, a shipment of baby wipes turns out to be $11.8 million worth of cocaine. All right, let me sit you down here. I got something coming at you hot. All right, out the gate. Okay. <laughs> we were we were thinking. This is what we're thinking. We have uh, we have this big box truck. We got two guys up front. We got Marv and we got uh, we got Yankee. Should be something different. We got we got two ladies up front. We got uh, Skippy Lou and Bessie. Should be something different. Okay, so what we got here is we got an old man and his dog. Uh, oh, it should be somebody different. Know what we got going on here? Okay, scrap the box truck idea. This is what we got going on here. We have uh, Johnson and Johnson's. Okay. Okay, so we're starting in the Johnson and Johnson's store, and we got this big delivery coming in. And um, okay, this is what we're thinking. We're thinking. We're thinking. What what do babies like a lot? They like they like milk. They like powder. They like they like uh, soft soft towels. They like teddy bears. You know what else they like? They like baby wipes on their bottoms. Clean butts. Clean butts. It's clean butts. That's it, right? We're coming in hot on the clean butts. We're not showing them. Can't do that. It's a movie for, I, for crying out loud. Trying to keep this PG-13. You know what I'm saying? So we coming in and uh, people uh, get a shipment in the back and the uh, box truck comes in and uh, you got the, the store manager. Um, you got the store manager, Crystal. She's like open up the back of the truck and uh, there's all this baby stuff in there. So they get like 70% of it done. There's a giant stack of baby wipes. Okay. And, uh, crystal is kind of a klutz. And so she's like helping unload with, uh, the, um, the, uh, warehouse manager. Uh, we're calling him, um, Chuck. So something it's, different. It should, uh, his name, uh, is, uh, is, uh, something different. Pepe, 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 Pepe. His name is Pepe. His name is Pepe. So you got crystal and Pepe, uh, cause we're trying to get this diverse, you know, diversity, uh, angle on, on this whole thing. So, um, he's a white guy and she's Latino. So, uh, Crystal and Pepe are in the warehouse and she's kind of a clutch. She's helping with the boxes. She trips and falls out of the back of the truck and she's like, Oh, ha ha funny. And she's kind of got a crush on Pepe, obviously. Uh, um, and so she, you know, she's like, Dios mio, so ha ha funny. And so she, uh, when she falls on the box, it like breaks open all these baby wipes and like all this powder comes out. She's like, Oh man, these are really dry baby wipes. She says something different. Man, uh, we didn't order baby powder. We we ordered uh, baby wipes. And <laughs> and Pepe's like, yeah, man. I mean, like we we gotta have we gotta have baby wipes because I mean, you I know. thought Pepe was white. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Oh, okay. He, he's trying to he's trying to integrate oh, okay, with her. Right. He's trying to impress okay. her. You know. <laughs> yeah, Pepe's white, but he's trying to fit in. You know, he's trying to meet her mom, uh, her uh, madre. Um. So anyway. Uh, he, he's like picking her up and then like, you know, obviously like, like any smart man, male person would do sees white powder, takes a little thing on his, on his fingers and rubs it on his gums. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He's like, oh, they weren't supposed to deliver this till later. Now we're in this together. Crystal, let me break this down for you right now. Okay. I've been having cocaine shipped here for the last six months. This is the perfect operation. We're about to make a lot of money, Crystal, but I need you to be on board because if not, uh, Eduardo here up in the truck, he's going to take you out back and blow your brains out. Says something different. He says, I need you. From the moment I saw you, I knew I loved you. And um, says something different. You know what, Crystal? Let me sit you down here, okay? You know, you thought you were getting baby wipes and you thought this was going to be an easy day. You're in for a hell of a ride because you're coming with us now. And so Pepe is like, get the forklift. We got to move this. We got to move this. We're switching trucks. We're getting this. These cameras, they've seen too much right now. So right now, Pepe and Crystal and, uh, and Nesto, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're moving fast. They're moving fast, moving quick. You know, these baby wipes... They're they're not gonna hold long, so they gotta they gotta gotta get a fake shipment in. Now they gotta recall in because now we got we got powder on the ground. This, <laughs> this has to get cleaned up. Powder on the ground. Four one one. Four one one. I don't know what that code it, means, but it's like the yeah. gang code for like powder on the ground means yeah. Okay. That yeah. 
there's there's cops in the, like a, a friendly cop just like rolls through the neighborhood. He's like doing his lunch break in the back, so they actually can't use uh, the shipment out because the guy's a canine unit and the dog's just gonna go crazy. So Pepe comes up with the idea. Let's call all of our female relatives. They gotta come through the store like they're mothers buying baby wipes, and so uh, they just create this like huge line, like massive sale on baby wipes. Like they like put it out you know, all across, all across Twitter. And so all these women are coming in and they're buying baby wipes and uh, they're smuggling out the cocaine with the baby wipes. So that's how they get the, the product out. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, once it's out, you know, they, they, they take it all back to um, the, the home base and uh, Crystal has got to be a part of it now because she actually kind of likes Pepe. They actually kind of got a thing. And then there's this guy named Chung. He's the guy who runs, the uh the house like the 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 center where they like distribute from and uh he's like um uh he's like guys like we are missing like 11.8 million in in shipment in product and they're like oh shit somebody like somebody nabbed some baby wipes bro and so somebody one of the mothers just like took like eight eight you know, eleven million dollars worth of cocaine. Yeah. So now they gotta gotta go back to the store. They gotta start looking at the footage. Who's grabbing baby wipes? Who's who's greedy little hands got on this? Who who sniffed this this deal out and you know thinking that they're actually getting baby wipes or you know who's who sent in? Yeah. Well, this is what we find out. So they they track this down and none other than Scarlett Yanagi. Uh, the massive drug lord from the south side. So they see her on on the camera footage. So they got to find now. They they can, then they're kind of like matching up with her going outside. They get the outside cam for doing something different. You know what they're doing? They're they you know what they, as they pull uh, get in. They see her pulling out. So they hop right back in because uh, she had to stop at the Chipotle next door. <laughs> so because you know her, it was bad she timing. Had to stop somewhere different. She had to stop at. Uh, she stopped at uh, it was uh, Jack and Jane's. She had stopped somewhere different. She stopped at uh, it was actually uh, the um, the uh, Hobie Lobby, <laughs> and uh, she had to get some, some crafts. Crafts, you know, she because she now she's thinking, well, how am I gonna how am I gonna package these up and hide them from from someone else? So Scarlett, you know, she's got her thing going on. They see her coming out, and <sighs> chase ensues. Yeah, exactly. So like that that's the need. They lost 11 million pounds. They got to go find uh Scarlet in um like LA and so they're just on this crazy chase. Uh Scarlet's like on a boat in Marina del Rey. She means something different. She she actually gets in a hot air balloon and like is like taking a ride up to the valley. Like she's going by air balloon. So they get in this old airplane um with a Tom Cruise look like who's like just as tours to air tours around LA. And uh, so they're like chasing this air balloon. There's this crazy scene where like, like yeah, Pepe is like, I'm going to jump out of the plane. Like, and she's like, Chris is like, no, cause I, you know, she like likes him, but she's like, don't do it because uh, what if you miss blah, 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 blah. Anyway, they like fall out of the plane. They like end up bouncing on top of the air balloon. They settle down there. Uh, freaking Scarlet doesn't know. She just thought it was like the Tom Cruise, like look like tour guy. And uh, so then all of a sudden they like set down uh, up in the valley um, at this giant compound and um, uh, Crystal and Pepe like kind of fall off and duck into the bushes. Yeah, it was uh, so they kind of roll into the bushes nice and solid. So they're, she's there up at Scarlet's cabin on, in, on top of the mountain. She's thinking she's way scot free. Chung, uh, Chung radios in. He's like, I got your coordinates. I'm coming. So he starts scaling the side of the mountain. And so he's going to be there shortly. Uh, but Crystal and Pepe, they're, they're, they're casing the joint right now, uh, going around the outside. And, um, you know, Scarlet's all like, yeah, we got the stuff. You know, we're finally going to be able to move, make this move into the, uh, into the uh, formula business. We're, we're going we're gonna to put this in the formula bottles and, uh, you know, it's going to be a big hit. <laughs> If we're, you know what I mean, <laughs> we're gonna have customers for years. So, so she's doing this. She's talking. Who is she talking to? And then, so they're waiting for uh, Crystal and Pepe. They're waiting for Chung for the for their reinforcements to come because uh, Chung's the muscle, and uh, so he's he's making his way up. 
And but you know, Scarlet's like, all right, I'm I'm moving now. And so they gotta think quick. They gotta well, what can we do? What what can we what can we do to stop her? So they take uh they take some zip ties and uh zip tie the screen door shut so she can't get out uh of the front. Okay. So that's exactly what they do. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like him. He's into it. He's, he's into, into it. it. He's, he's into it. it. He loves he's it. He's in the movie. <laughs> so yeah, Scarlet opens up the door. Whoa, why is this why is this stuck? So she uh Big boot, big boot to the to the door to kick it open, and uh, it doesn't phase her. She's unfazed at all. She's she's a crime boss. Something like that's not going to stop her. Uh, but what's uh, Crystal comes and then she tackles Scarlet. But you know what? You know who's waiting inside? Crystal's not Crystal's. Scarlet's henchman. That's right. Uh, Scarlet's henchman. Uh, uh, Scarface. Should be something uh, different. Um, uh, cojones. Should be somebody different. Uh, his name is. Uh, Gimp should be somebody different. His name is uh, she's gonna be different. Sus one, <laughs> sus one. His name is sus one. Sus one. His name is sus one. His name is sus one. And uh, he sees what's happening and he's just like, she's like, go, 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 sus one. And he's like, okay. So he like throws all the 11 million, you know, dollars worth of cocaine into like his sweet ass car and starts peeling out. Mm. And it's like a cool like tank. Like it's like a modified Bronco. Like we're going to get Ford sponsored in on this. Totally down for it. You know, all those guys, all those execs over at Ford are just like lines, 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 baby. <laughs> Love it. Yes, we will sponsor cocaine. <laughs> And so anyway, uh, she's like, tear- he's like, uh, sus one is like tearing down like the, uh, these crazy switchback roads and, uh, crystal and, uh, Pepe like hop on motorbikes and they're chasing and they like fly down the mountain and, uh, the Bronco almost like hits this car going the other way and, uh, it swerves out of the way and then, oh, it swerves out of the way again. So it doesn't hit, uh, Crystal and Pepe it's freaking Chung, like yeah. just freaking way like so late, dude. Yeah. He's like, guys, uh, I'm turning around or something <laughs> like that. Um, well, it, well, he gets yeah, that. Exactly like, Where yeah. are you guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dang! And then, so what? What Chung does? He sees a paraglider. So then he takes the paraglider off, jumps off, and he's like, "Oh, I'll get to you!" And then, so he's kind of coming down, and they're coming down the mountain, motorbikes. We got the the this Bronco. We're investing most of yeah. the budget because Scarlet also like hops into this like rocketeer version of like a jetpack, and she's like. Pow! straight out the freaking mountain and it's just like this crazy down the road like like just freaking drug addled like chase scene and just like bike i hope you wanted a drug pack a- action movie i do you're killing it right now okay <laughs> he is all about it yes <laughs> all right so we get down we're at the beach now we're here we're at the beach uh we got bronco uh in the sand it kind of flipped over because uh there was some kids and uh you know <laughs> we had some tumbling going on and they get there. Uh, Scarlet comes down, but she, now she has a flamethrower. I don't know how she's she got pick, something different. She has a bazooka. She's got something different. You know what she has? She has a mini gun. She has something different. She has um sheep shears. <laughs> <laughs> she has <laughs> <laughs> she has uh she has a laser pointer. Oh. <laughs> she has something different. She has she has a squirt gun. She has something different. She, you know what she has? Is she has a nice, really nice tool pen. She has something different. The pen is minor than the sword. <laughs> she has a she has a lightsaber. Actually, um, so she pulls out her lightsaber signed by Josh Lucas. Sound, yeah, who's that? We just Ger- George Lucas, George okay. Lucas, <laughs> George Lucas. And this, and this, I get those guys confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same consonant at the beginning. It should be signed by Josh Lucas. Not, <laughs> she has pulls out this lightsaber by, signed by Josh Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pepe is like, Who the hell is Josh Lucas? And she's like, Sweet home, doesn't matter. Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> And then that's when when uh, when Chung comes in, he's flying. He says, "Tally ho!" <laughs> and something different. He says, "Cowabunga!" He says, something different. He says uh, "Chipotle!" <laughs> and then we're also sponsored by Chipotle. Yeah, yeah. I was I was trying to squeeze it in there. Well, it's better than Chipotle and cocaine, right? Yeah, <laughs> Chipotle and weed. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get weed for this, yeah. so sorry. So he kind of like 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 sits on uh, <laughs> sits on Scarlett Scarlett Jorgensen. And uh, kind of scuff, uh, scuffles the show down a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, it's a total bar fight on the sand on the beach. Sus one gets the better hand, uh, upper hand on everybody, and he ends up Scarlet Sus one. They both apprehend Pepe and they throw him in the truck, and they're out of there. But 
Uh, in the meantime, Chung and Crystal get the drugs, so they have the drug. They have the eleven million dollars worth of drug of uh, baby white uh, cocaine uh, back in their possession, but they took Pepe. So like they're left with this like you know hero's choice, right? What do, what do they do? And Chung's like, oh come on, we can just go back. We can just like ship all the stuff out, and we can get uh, our you know dealer off our back, kind of stuff. And she's like, no, but Pepe put his his life out on the line for for me. And and Chung's like. Pepe's the one who got you into this mess. She's like, yeah, but I still love him. And Chung's like, oh! and he's like, oh, girl. Yeah, I always knew you two were good together. And so she's like, yeah, we got to get him back. And he's like, yeah, so you can make babies. Chung's like a little high probably. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so they decide. Right, we're, down, we're down to about 10.5 million left in the stash at this point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unbeknownst yeah. Scarlet, they yeah. don't know that they just lost a million. Anyway, they go chasing after him again. Uh, they took they now they took him. Uh, they took Pepe like to the lair where the big bad is. You thought yeah. Scarlet was the big bad. You thought Sus One was the big bad. <laughs> now nah, the big bad is uh, is definitely um, uh uh, just the guy's name is King. The guy's name is King. Okay, cool. cool. The guy's name is King. Uh, that was my idea. That was my idea. Uh, from the get go, that was an original. That was yeah, a was, Nick was, original. Was. Um, so this guy's name is King, and uh, so he's just like, all right. Um, he's actually the one who ordered the eleven million dollars, and he was testing Pepe to make sure that he could like handle the stuff, and realizes that Pepe couldn't handle it. So he's like, look, dude, you're you're done. You're out. You're out. You're out. And uh, nobody walks away from this business. Uh, they only get uh, they only swim out of this business, and by swim I mean drown in a box. <laughs> so, a concrete box, if you know what I'm saying, huh? <laughs> so he uh, so he's like uh, Pepe, you're done here, and, uh, and then it turn and they're in this giant club, they're like in this cool room up above, looking down at the dance floor. It's like a Saturday night, you know. They're somewhere different. Uh, they're uh, in a giant warehouse uh, where they. Uh, they're somewhere pack- different. They are uh, in uh, what's what else is in L.A. Um, they're on Skid Row. They're on Skid Row. It's very clever. This uh, mob boss operates out of a tent, a big tent uh, in Skid Row. But once you go inside the tent, there's a, a little drop down like into the sewer, and then the sewer goes into this giant subway, old subway station, and that's where King has his operation. And uh, there's some cool music and lights and whatever, and so he's just like, Pepe, you're out, man. And uh, it's a giant. It's cavern. It's cavernous. Yeah. And uh, that's when uh, uh, you hear like a... And like Crystal just got this like sweet gun, like giant ass gun, and it's just like time to wipe. <laughs> <laughs> she says I'm different. <laughs> you got shit on your ass. Something different. Uh <laughs> <laughs> damn man, I had a short list. I <laughs> yeah. She, she um, said this is anybody order some baby wipes? <laughs> I got some baby wipes for the babies. <laughs> All right, I'm just working on myself here. Yeah, these yeah, are yeah. terrible. I'm not letting this one go. This has got to be a good one. Something she, different. She, uh, said, she said, how do you different. want your wall painted? <laughs> <laughs> something different. Oh, I thought that was a good one. <laughs> uh, That's when Chung pulls out the lightsaber oh, signed by, yeah. uh, by Josh Lucas. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me recommend a line here. She's going to say, she's gonna be like, let me clean this up. Or let me wipe this up. Should be something different. Something different. <laughs> she's going she to say, Listen, man, you guys, you guys are the pr- pitch in this movie. She's gonna say, "Hey, <laughs> let me clean up that dirty ass of yours." Hey, I like, yeah, so, I like so, that. What she said, she's, <laughs> yeah. she's like, "Let me, hey, let me clean up that dirty ass of yours." <laughs> and then, and then, um, <laughs> and, and King is like, "Yes, please." And then he pulls out his gun, and it's like, boom, 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 yeah. boom, 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 and she likes just shooting a fifty cal. She's like. Yeah. You know, Emma Stone like type actress, but she's just like, and Chung's just like deflecting bullets with the lightsaber. Like he's in, he's in complete one with the force. Yeah. The one signed by Josh Lucas, yeah. that one. Yeah. It's orange for Home Depot. Cause we're also yeah. bringing, we got, yeah. we got freaking sponsored by cocaine, sponsored by Chipotle, sponsored, sponsored by, by cocaine. freaking, freaking Home Depot. Johnson man. and Johnson. And uh Ford Bronco. Yeah. Not the rest of the Ford company, just Ford Bronco. Yeah. Just Ford Broncos. Yeah. So yeah, we have this, we have this showdown here. Um, you know, Sus one, uh, he's like flying through the air, throwing out shurikens and stuff. And uh, Pepe dies behind the the cement block that he was about to drown in. Um, <laughs> and this is like Crystal and, and Scarlet have their like showdown, and and they're you know the, somehow Scarlet pulls out a katana this time, and uh, Crystal pulls out a broadsword from somewhere. I don't know where they got it. 
Um, but they have it. And then this is like a battle of the ages. Like uh, Scarlet's like, well, let me show you my, my Japari- Japanese samurai style. And then Crystal's like, well, let me show you my, uh, my, uh, middle age, not middle age, middle ages, uh, long sword style. And so no, 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 <laughs> she, she just goes, cause you know, she's a clerk, right. From a, from a Johnson Johnson. So she's just like, she's like, let me show you my Japanese style. That's uh Scarlet. She's like, and then, then, uh, freaking, um, Crystal just like, like just chops her hand off and she's like, clean up on aisle three. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, Scarlet unfazed and totally hopped up on another 500,000 of the cocaine. It's just like, you know, because we're down to about 10 million. In the cocaine. We're just burning through this cocaine. <laughs> and um, so they're just like, she's like, doesn't even feel it. So she's just one handed fighting and it's just like, ting, 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 ting. And it's just, dude, it's like, it's like you thought Uma was sweet and Kill Bill. Yeah. How do you, okay, we were testing this ending out. Uh, and you could say it's a bad idea. Okay, we cut. So during this fight, you know, uh, Crystal gets her bell rung a little bit, and then she kind of starts fading in and out. And you know where she is? She's back in the warehouse in a pile of cocaine, in in the warehouse, and she's kind of coming to. And Pepe's, hey, are you okay? You kind of took a spill there. It was this was all in her head uh, from her first wild cocaine trip. If not. We have an ending otherwise. I think it should be something different. It should be. Okay, so she cuts off Scarlet's head right there, right then and there. <laughs> and then she wakes up in the pile. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, the the alternate ending could be that it was all real in her head, and then King is killed, and, and Pepe is so impressed, and yeah. Crystal becomes, she's like, Johnson and Johnson does that, that good benefits, where the benefits like here in this yeah. drug lord then. Chung becomes their godfather, their their yeah, kid. Of their kid. You know, happily ever after. Who happens to just somehow be black, you know, because we yeah. want to make sure that we really hit all these, you know, yeah. demographic And points. Vin Diesel shows up, and he's like, there's nothing like a good family. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. But just for that line, like, yeah, he just yeah, shows yeah. up. Like, like, yeah. Vin Diesel? And he's just like, <laughs> well, give my God. Now you're speaking my language. Yeah. 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 So, uh, that's the alternate ending where, yeah. like, they just consummate, yeah, on, on that floor. What would you call this action-packed thriller? Call it Ride or Die. Uh, something different. Powder. L.A. Powder. Yeah. Powder. Something different. Baby powder. Uh, <laughs> we thought we, we, baby powder's good. Baby powder's good. Yeah. Um, give me, give me a couple more. Give me a couple yeah, more. We, I want to yeah. have like twenty. Uh, Saver by Josh. Mm. Nah, she sound different. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, high times at uh, L.A. Bayside. No, I think it should be baby. Uh, uh, well, well chunged. <laughs> Well chunked. Well chunked. Well chunked. Give me, give me something different. Come on. Uh, the baby wipes were actually different. baby powder. Baby powder. Baby wipes were actually baby. Give me something different. Come on. Oh. Wiped. 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 Dirty ass. How about um, yeah, I like wiped. Wiped, wiped three. I think we should do wiped out. No. Wiped, wiped out. out. Ooh, ooh, ooh yeah. wiped out. I yeah. like that one. Yeah. That was, that what about good. cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> Home Depot. <laughs> Subtitle. <laughs> Chipotle Home Depot for I, I, I think I think it's wiped out. Wiped, right. wiped out. Baby, wiped out or baby powder. I think those we are running. Wiped out. Titles. All right, nice. Yeah. All right, cool. We making this thing? We're making it. We're making right. it right now. All right, let's toast on it. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> After your mates, and your mates will always look after you. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers indeed. It's time for All C News. This is our favorite segment. It really is. Everything else is so much fun, but this is just a classic. We do this every episode at the end, and this is where we go down to the land down under, checking on our Aussie friends to see what is breaking down there. I got to admit, uh, I know I say this every time, but it's just funny the more you learn about Aussie news. I don't, I think I, I, I honestly think that I, I can say that I don't care about any other country. Uh, it's U S okay. Canada, U S <laughs> no, no, it's U S Australia. I mean, like we just like, I've learned so much about it doing Aussie news and it's just so much fun. And you do say it every time. And I do yeah, say that every time I got to because what if this is the first time somebody's listening and they're like, Aussie news, this is incredible. And they love it so much. Oh, I'm going to come back next time to listen to Aussie news. And Aussie news is the only thing that brings them back. What if? Could be. Yeah. If they made it the hour of the uh, <laughs> cocaine talk. <Yeah. laughs> um, snakes 
quite secretly living in urban Darwin. Study shows their preferred suburbs. What country puts out a freaking report about, uh, oh, um, you know, over here, water pythons really like to hang out. Olive pythons are over here. And, you know, if you're not careful, you might get in some golden snakes, some this or that. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I know I say I like the, like, I want to, like, picture myself living in Australia because there's a lot of cool things. This is the one big turnoff. Like, all of the things that want to kill you in Australia, there's a lot. Um, so, anyway, these people just started to track. Apparently, like, over the last five years, there were 5,000, over 5,000 snake callouts in these suburbs in Darwin alone. And Darwin is, like, in the upper northwest part of uh, Australia. And so it's just, like, this one region. And 5,000, like, these call outs are like they call like pest control. So it's like 5,000 in five years. That's a thousand snakes a year, which if you do the math is almost three a day. That's crazy. It's like, like three people being like, Oh yeah, there's a snake in my house. But notice you say call outs. It's not like, it's not like snake bites or sure. attacks. It's just guys are like, Hey mate, you got a couple of snakes on you, on your ute. Over yeah. There, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, these are the ones that are reported, you know, imagine, True. imagine the other, uh, 5,000 that the guy just pulls out his 12 gauge. <laughs> We used to have a snake out back. <laughs> yeah. Or they can't report it. Yeah. They can't report it because, you know, they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Phones don't ring if you can't dial. <laughs> right. Or that. <laughs> the other thing about this that I thought was really interesting is, uh, you know, they go through this list of, like, how you can, like, fence up certain nooks and crannies in your house. You can put chicken wire in. You can kind of, like, block up certain spaces. And then they go into this segment that's just, like, you know, it's, there's nothing to be afraid of. A lot of snakes in Darwin are actually not poisonous, which is nice to know. But they're like, a lot of snakes might live under your house or around your house, and you might not ever even know. You'll be there for years. And then the p next picture under that segment is just like this giant python crawling through like their spice cabinet. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to notice a freaking 15 pound six foot snake crawling through my garlic and onion powder. Like, what are you talking about? It's hilarious. Yeah. Just, just don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Just grab just grab the Parmigiano Reggiano. You'll be fine. <laughs> grab it, man. We really need it. This pasta ain't finished without the Parmigiano Reggiano. You know what I'm saying, man? Or if you're like sitting there. And this is a snake. It's just like, like licking this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like licking him. He's like, salt. Salt. <laughs> you throw in the pepper. You ruined it. You ruined it. Gordon Ra Gordon Snake Ramsey. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just think that that is so funny. Out here, it's like beware of the deer crossings in Ohio. <laughs> like They'll down there, you. it's like, hey man, um, open a cupboard with a glove on <laughs> uh, to get your dishes out, your your coffee mugs. You know, wear wear long sleeve shirts today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wear like a face shield, <laughs> beekeeper outfit. Yeah, <laughs> like, jumps at you like oh, <laughs> almost got me that time. <laughs> keep trying. I get to keep my new nose this yeah. year, yeah. buddy. <laughs> I mean, that just goes to show you that in life, you know, the, the stuff that might be around you uh, could kill you. It could, it could, uh, depending on where you're living. But a lot of times, you know, don't worry about it. There's, there's nothing to be scared of. Because, you know, the baby powder that you're getting into or the baby wipes, it's all good, clean, fun. And, and you know, there's there's really really nothing to worry, ab worry about. And, you know, it can lead you on uh, quite the uh, enthralling adventure and exciting uh, moment in your life. When, and you could even come out of it with a, a lightsaber signed by Josh Lucas. And, and, you know, that's something that you can cherish forever. Because, you know, when, when you're uh, either when you're getting your Chipotle... Uh, you're, you're doing your world records and you have uh, extremely long armpit hairs. Uh, you know, the, these are all these are all things that, that you can you can believe in when you go back and, you know, you're, you're sitting down and you're getting to watch your angry beavers or your animaniacs and, and and all that good fun stuff. And, you know, and they might be dusting you for fingerprints and, and you're like, whoa, 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 we can't fingerprints. He's dead. And um, that's just that's just not not in the. The, in the cards right now because uh what it all comes down to is uh you know we're, we're just getting to this full house of life and you know it all what we all get down to is you know who's gonna walk comet 
when they get home from work. that sound that's the sound of the recommendation station train coming in pulling in uh to the dock and what i this is where we recommend to you guys something that we think you'd enjoy or that we enjoy that uh you know might add a spice of our life to yours as the snake would say uh where we give you a a movie a tv show a music a, a lifestyle a product anything like that but what I want to give to you guys today is we were talking about cartoons, a cartoon that I thoroughly enjoy, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Very nice. It's a uh, very adult themed uh, humor, late night, uh, late night stuff. So uh, if if that's not your bag, baby, I'm sorry. But uh, or if your kids are watching and you're like, hey, OK, OK, maybe not yet. Whoa, whoa. But uh, no, it is. It is fun. It's a it's a it's a TV show or animated cartoon where uh it's a grandpa who's the smartest man in the universe. And there's multiple realities in this universe, infinite realities in this universe. So anything can happen. But one thing there is not, there's no time travel. It's all, it's all everything's happening at the same time in all these different universes. They're all at, all at uh, different iterations of, of this universe. So um, it's just, uh, it's really fun, the stuff that they can do. I, I, I like the... Uh, I don't, I don't know. I watched the last season. It might not have been as good as the other, the previous ones. They might, because they, they might be trying to milk it because they got renewed for like 10 seasons. Um, but it's still, it's still good. It's still funny. But usually that show, I always find it funnier the second time through. Yeah, there's a lot you miss going yeah. in the first time. Because the, the jokes are just, one, they're so layered, and two, they're yeah. just so, so, they're like constant. They're always, every line is a joke and it's tied to something else, which I love this show so yeah. much because I think. One, structurally, it's like amazing that they can like crank out so many decent episodes and then so many good episodes come out of that too. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if they're milking it. They might just be in a re, re kind of re strategy kind of phase of trying to be like, all right, now we have another five seasons we got to go. So what do we want to do? Yeah. Because the first three seasons, the first four seasons are just, they are unloading on us with the humor. Yeah. And, and the thing is, like, each episode, or for the most part, is uh, independent of itself. Like, you know, it can yeah. be a standalone. But then also they layer in stuff that's like, hey, this was back in season one. Yeah. You know, we're bringing this back up. And, like, they have an overarching story throughout the series. And there was a big payoff in, in this last season, yeah. which I thought it was, it, it was a lot of people talking about, like, hey, I wonder what's going to happen with this and this. So there was a payoff. So I'm wondering, I haven't seen something of, like, oh, I guess there are a few things, but, like, I can't wait until they bring it back up, like in, yeah. in future episodes, because it's always fun. Well, I just know. looked it up. So they're in season six right now, right? Yeah. I, right. So they just started in October here. They yeah. yeah, they started like they did half the season. They'll probably do the other half. Like, they talked a little bit about how they were gonna slowly start investing in more narrative. Like they've they've just built such a big world that they're kind of like, all right, now it's fair to bring some structure to our bigger story. Yeah. But like you can, they even break fourth walls and stuff to like talk about how they don't want to get pinned down by yeah exposition and bullshit <laughs> yeah and it, it's so good because they could do they could really do anything with, yeah. with, with the yeah. with the world that they're in it's great it's infinite hulu? universe what's it on hulu and HBO? uh it's it's cartoon network so but yeah you can watch it on hulu you can watch it on uh, hbo um or if you have cable i think it's like sunday nights at midnight or something nice. or 11 i think 11 is a new episode whenever they whenever they're coming out but uh justin Roiland and dan Harmon are the creators and uh they do they do good good stuff they do Nice recommendation. I'm kind of jealous because that's a good one. Uh, I recommend it too. Shh, don't tell Luke. Oh, you already recommended it? No, I said I want to oh, okay. recommend it too. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny. We're in an alternate reality yeah. of Nick and Lordy. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, jeez, Nick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, guys, it's been a fun one. 98 episodes in the can. Holy cow. It's been a wild ride. We're so happy to have our DJ back. Hey, man, I don't. I feel like I never really went anywhere. Oh, it's, it's how close I feel to you guys. Yeah. Have him back in the physical world. You're on the physical plane. That's what I meant. Yep. Um, but uh, no, thank you, buddy, for being here. Add to the show. A lot of energy and buzzkill is great. And a tough producer this time. Tough producer. But, you know, you got to go through the fire and the flames. 
to get to the gold. Uh, guys, have an amped up week. Have an amped up day wherever you're at in life. Go for it. Go for the gold. Grab the brass ring. You know what I say. Take a bump. Smack the rump. Get out there. Have a good time. This is Nick. See you next time. I'm signing off. And this is Luke signing off. Thank you guys once again. We got a couple more episodes for this season coming at you. If there is anything that you want to hear uh, going forward or anything you'd like to see, email us at VelocityCastPodcast at gmail.com. If you are, you know, going to church and have a confession, tell your priest, I got a confession. I listen to VelocityCast Podcast and I enjoy the hell out of it. Uh, thank you guys once again. And like we always say, there is no item more valuable than a signed lightsaber by Josh Lucas. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Velocity Chaos Podcast. We upload new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Be sure to subscribe and rate us on iTunes, Spotify, or your podcast platform of choice. Interact with us on Instagram at Velocity Chaos Pod or on Facebook and YouTube at Velocity Chaos Podcast. We are grateful for your time and hope you enjoyed it here. Please tell a friend and thank you once again.